Hi, welcome to another ASBOG related video. Uh, in this video, I wanted to talk about how I studied for and passed the FG ASBOG exam. Uh, taking the ASBOG gives you a much better idea of, well, maybe how you should have studied the first time. And, and although I did pass on the first try, I wanted to share some of the things that I wish I had known um, before I had put so much time and dedication into studying for the exam. All right. So first things first, before you begin to study, um, you have to do a couple of things. Um, you need to give yourself ample time uh, to set aside, to study, to recognize areas that you're, um, you know, particularly strong in, or maybe that you need a refresher. So six months is a really good, a really good amount of time. It gives you um, enough time to kind of, you know, flesh those, those uh, areas out um, and focus where you need to focus most. Remember when you're going into this that very basic concepts are fair game and easy points. And when I say basic concepts, I'm referring to potential questions that let's say might require the use of very intuitive formulas like area or volume, um, but they might be disguised in geologic ways. They may not be, um, you know, like a area or volume question that you might see in math class. It might be dealing with or, or, you know, something like that. And so you kind of have to just recognize that this is really asking a very simple, um, concept and that should be fair game for me or you know easy points for me um you might even be asked you know very intro level questions that you know from determining you know uh which one of the options is a mafic or felsic rock you know those questions are not off limits um and you should take every opportunity to get those questions right um because you know they're you know they're easy points uh, the subject matter experts that um, have spent, you know, a lot of their time um, creating these questions, they make sure that they are not trivial at all. So it's not going to be beneficial for you to just outright memorize a fact like, you know, knowing 75% of the Earth's volcanoes occur in the Pacific Ring of Fire. It's going to be a lot more beneficial to understand why there's such an abundance of volcanoes and earthquakes um, in the Ring of Fire in the first place. Um, a, a guiding uh, statement that I took from one of my professors, she described herself as a general, generalist and not a specialist. And I think, um, especially when approaching this exam, that's a really good uh, mindset to have. Um, like sure, you know, specialties will definitely uh, be beneficial to you. You know, that's not a disadvantage, but knowing a lot of, or knowing a little about a lot goes a long way too. Um, and so the study method that I focused on uh, was using active recall. And so what that is looking like is essentially forcing yourself to think about um, answers to questions and, and really get your mind working and pulling out information from the depths, you know, maybe concepts you haven't considered in a very long time, um, but that's gonna really help with your memory um, and help you on the test for sure. And especially because that's how you're being tested, right? The exam is a multiple choice test. There is no fill in the blank. Um, and so you are preparing yourself very well whenever you are studying in the way that you're going to be tested. Um, and so I, I like to make flashcards. Um, I use a combination of both physical flashcards as well as some electronic ones. Um, but the physical ones may be a little overwhelming. Um, so my, the first step I took was I read a physical geology textbook. Um, there are some free textbooks online that you can have access to, 
Um, but if you purchased one while you were an undergraduate, I, you know, go ahead and read that. It's a great resource. Um, go ahead and take notes on areas that you have just forgotten or that you're, you know, you never, you need a refresher on. Um, you should definitely take particular notice to like, things such as like where, how, and why geologic concepts uh, and processes occur and take note of some, co some contrasting differences. So things like uh, reverse for versus normal faults. You know, the exam is, um, loves to have you juggling very similar things at one time and like having you sparse through the nitty gritty details. So being able to, you know, do that is be very helpful for you. Um, and don't neglect um, chapters on, you know, volcanoes or glaciers or coasts just because you don't live there. Um, the test is a national exam and just because you live in California does not mean you're not going to get any glacier questions, unfortunately. Um, so don't be caught off guard with that. And like I said earlier, don't underestimate the possibility of intro level questions. Um, a lot of the content that you are going to review in your physical geology textbook is going to form a really strong basis for when you tackle um, the more challenging questions, the more involved questions. Um, and so having a good basis there is going to set you up uh, well for the rest of the exam. So this is just a good first step to, you know, um, starting to get your mind, um, if it's been a while, you know, thinking uh, geologically and uh, just, you know, uh, refresh all those little details that you might have forgotten over the years. Uh, second is I took old exams from the classes I had in undergrad. Um, this is especially helpful if like they are multiple choice. And again, because you know, my method was, was studying with active recall. Um, but also, you know, open response questions can also be really beneficial in um, helping you think through, you know, more advanced concepts or, you know, uh, questions that might ask you to draw things, your diagrams and whatnot, um, those can be helpful for different types of learners. And so um, I definitely think that, you know, how you learn the content is perhaps not as important, um, but, uh, you know, like I said, you are going to be tested through a multiple choice format, so you might as well get comfortable with that as well. But if you need to learn something, go ahead and look through, um, you know, the you know, the open response exam and what your response was. How would you respond to it now um, after you've taken some time away from that exam? Um, when you go through this, you know, look at your past answers and, you know, what did you get right? You know, did you do really well on, you know, a sedimentology exam that focused on environmental, you know, uh, environments and deposition characteristics? Or, you know, did you do really poorly on a hydro exam, uh, you know, focusing on aquifers, you know, uh, take it, take into account what, you know, your strengths are and what you got wrong and what you got right. Um, and then remedy that, you know, ask yourself, what did you get wrong and what knowledge did you need specifically to get that question right? Um, these first two concepts or first two steps really um, are really important if, you know, for your, when you're taking the ASPOC exam, you know, a few years after having completed, you know, your coursework. So like in an ideal situation, you know, you would take the exam as soon as you could after your last geology course, which is most likely like a field camp or a field geology course. Um, but I understand that's not always the case. So speaking of courses, um, you need to consider your background. You know, what classes have you taken and which ones did you feel most comfortable or enjoy the most? Um, and what percentage of the exam do they cover? Having one or two strong areas is certainly not to your disadvantage and spending some time reviewing them or even strengthening those areas even more can be a great boost to your morale when it comes to studying the more challenging or topics that that are not as interesting to you. It does take a lot more energy and effort to study 
new material. So for example, if you did not take an economic geology course in undergrad, I would really only suggest focusing on that material if you have the time. Uh, remember, you can fail entire subsections uh, of the exam and still pass. Um, the only real exception that I would encourage is if you haven't taken geomorphology or a class that's focusing on um, surface you know, processes, uh, that's really important. Um, it is the second most emphasized content area on the exam other than the general and field geology. So as you can see, general and field geology takes up 21% of the exam. And this is coming from the 2019 Canada Handbook as well, and then geo geomorphology uh, covers 13%. Um, and so that's really important. And I, I would, again, I'll reiterate, just because you don't live in a desert, coastal or karst environment does not mean that the related questions are not fair game. And without saying too much, or, you know, <laughs> um, it is incredibly important that you have, you know, a, a decent understanding of geomorphology and environments. So definitely don't skip that when studying. The most important advice that I can probably give anyone who's studying to take the ASBOG exam is to take the free FG question exam um, that they have in the Canada Handbook. It's only 40 questions, which is unfortunate. I wish it was longer, but it is quite literally the closest material to what you will see on test day. Tackling these questions to the best of your ability and then reviewing the answer key is going to help you so much. And after you've considered the questions for yourself, I'd recommend watching my video walkthrough of me taking that same exam and then offering my insights and thoughts um, as I was taking the questions. Um, some people have found them really helpful, um, you know, because I do explain why the answer choice is what the answer choice is. And um, that seems to, to really help people. Um, I think there was only like one question that I got wrong when I took the exam. Um, and uh, of course, all of my corrections are listed in the description of that video. So uh, do, do note that. <clears throat> so, and also by taking these practice questions, you get a glimpse into how the question writers think and how they expect you to perform and think on the exam. Similar question types are very likely, so be prepared and get those points. Any conversation about the ASMOG exam would be remiss without, con like, without discussing reg review. For me, reg review was a blessing and a curse. It has an amazing amount of knowledge in one book, which for me made it extremely easy to become overwhelmed. And because these books address content on both the FG and PG exams, the PG being the professional geologist exam, um, it can be diff difficult to differentiate what material is specific to which test. And in any case, there is a lot of overlap between the two exams, but you know, there is some content you know, in those books that just is beyond the scope of what you're going to be asked on the FG exam. Uh, it's just too hyper specific. Um, what I did was I made flashcards of terms and definitions that I was not familiar with, um, some common minerals, and maybe a few uncommon minerals. Um, I'll touch more uh, about that in a little bit. Uh, areas that you, you can use to compare and contrast. So um, environmental deposition characteristics are very important. Map symbols, you will need to know how to um, interpret a map. So uh, like I said, you know, after field geology is a really good time because you will have had um, ample experience looking at maps. So that's to your advantage. Um, of course, there's going to be some material that you are just expected to have committed to memory um, and the first being the geologic time scale. If you memorize one thing to bring with you in the back of your mind when you test, the geologic time scale is it. You are all but guaranteed to have at least one question, but likely many more, which will require you to apply it in some way. 
You should also be familiar with Darcy's Law, Poor Water Velocity, uh, Bowen's Reaction Series, as well as the units for equations like transmissivity and hydraulic conductivity. My last bit of advice is to simply remember that it is impossible and an insult to yourself to think that you can or should study everything that the test can throw at you. If your gut instinct is to memorize 300 mineral formulas, don't. You are wasting your time and energy. Focus on becoming accustomed to being asked questions and thinking about them geologically. The goal of your studying should be to further develop your skills thinking geologically, using the years you've studied the language as your basis. You have everything it takes to pass the exam, even if not on your first attempt. If you fail at first, you will leave with an abundance of experience that your first time peers don't have. Use that experience strategically to your advantage and prepare yourself for your next attempt. I genuinely hope that this was helpful to you. And if so, I greatly appreciate if you could give this video a like and consider, consider subscribing. Best of luck on the ASVOG exam.